This is gonna be a fun one. And this is gonna be a fun one because we're gonna be looking at beta and a very complicated question that you may deal with on an exam or an assignment. Now, beta is something that there's just no other way to go about it. You're gonna see it in your introduction to finance course. And fun fact, you're gonna see it throughout all of your finance courses and your professional career in finance or anything related to you know money. So that's something that you need to be able to master and be comfortable with. And this question seeks to show you all the different concepts and elements you're gonna need to master to be pretty comfortable and empowered within your finance course and its exams. That's why you're here, right? So let's go right into it. So in this question, we have to compute beta, okay? This is definitely a question related to beta. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the question together, we're gonna identify the key parts, and we're gonna see how they actually relate to our beta computation. So a money manager is managing the account of a large investor. Well, I hope so, he is a money manager. The investor holds the following stocks. So the following stocks are right here. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D. And we're telling you that the portfolio's required rate of return, okay, is 17%. That's pretty interesting. And the risk-free rate is 7%. Okay, cool. And the return on the market is expected to be 14%. Really, really, really cool. And we're discussing that we need to find the stock uh, the estimated beta for stock D. As you can see right here, we don't have our beta for stock D. So we're definitely miss we're dealing with something that we call missing betas, okay? We have a bunch of different betas that probably consist the beta of our portfolio, but we don't have our beta for a specific stock, okay? So that's super important. Now, obviously in the question, we're telling you that the required rate of return is 17%. Now this has to ring a bell for you. The required rate of return is equal to your K, okay? The required rate of return, I'm gonna say this one more time. The required rate of return is equal to your K. And when do we see K? We see K when we're looking at our SML, our CML, and our CAL. Essentially, all of our lines within CAPM. Now our duty is to figure out, well, what line are we looking at right now? So just to be sure, if you look at your screen, we have our K, okay? And we're telling you that K is equal to 17%. Nice. But also, just to make it painfully obvious to you guys, if we're dealing with beta, it means that we're dealing with the SML. The SML essentially says, if we write it right here, all right, it says that K is equal to RF plus beta times the market risk premium. Okay, super duper in point. You need to be able to master that. You need to be able to remember this. There's just, there's no other way to go about it. And just because there's so much blue on the screen, we're gonna switch to this like purple pinkish, okay? And then we say that the risk-free rate is 7%. So RF is equal to 7%. And we're telling you that the return on the market is equal to 14%. Cool. So we have a lot of information. Now, what's cool and how I like to go about these questions on exams is I wanna just identify what I know and maybe it will lead me to something else that I don't know right now. So of course, if we're talking about K, if we're talking about RF, if we're talking about ERM, so the market return, we definitely know that we're dealing with the SML. And you know, on these questions, they never just throw you a bunch of stuff without a purpose in mind. So just like that, if we go and take a look at our SML, we're gonna be able to see, well, we already have our RF, we already have our ERM, we already have our RF, as I said, and we have our K. So the only missing part is actually <laughs> our beta, okay? And this is pretty cool because if you look at the question once again, we're telling you, hey friend, what is stock D's estimated beta? Because we have the beta of A, B, C, we're only missing the beta of D. So what we have to do now is maybe, just maybe, although I know this is what we have to do, I'm just kind of being funny. We know that, hey, well, if we find the beta of our SML, we could actually look at beta and try to see if we could derive the beta of D. And why does this make sense? Because another key rule that you guys need to write down, need to remember, is that our portfolio's beta is equal to 
the weighted sum of its individual betas. So a portfolio, I think we could all agree that a portfolio consists of securities, at least two securities or position or assets or whatever the case may be. So if we have two securities, okay, we have money placed into two securities, well, our beta is going to be actually equal to, so the beta of our portfolio is actually going to be equal to whatever proportion we've set times the beta of that security. So if we have 20% set into security A, so we'll do 20% times its beta plus 80% times the beta of the other security. Now, this was a whole lot of talking, but I'm just trying to, you know, throw a bunch of spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks. The idea here is that you need to be able to remember that the portfolio's beta is equal to the weighted sum of its individual securities betas, okay? This is super duper important because what we're saying here is that, well, we're going to be able to see that all these different, okay, so all of these different securities vis-a-vis -vis their weight will give us our portfolio's beta. And a portfolio's beta will actually be the beta of our SML, okay? So now let's look at all the different things we know and place them onto our SML and derive the missing value, which in this case is beta. So we have SML, K is equal to RF plus beta ERM minus RF. So we're telling you that 17% is equal to, in this case, the risk-free rate 7% plus beta minus our market return, which is 14% minus our 7%. And that's going to give us the following. That's going to tell us that the beta of our portfolio is equal to one42 Eight five seven. Now this is, our, this is really simple math. You could definitely go about it on your own and you're going to find the same beta as myself. So what does this mean for us? Once again, this means that by deriving our beta from our SML, we're able to find our beta of our portfolio. And we see right here that we have all the different securities within our portfolio. We have security A, security B, and security C, and security D. And as I said, we are missing the beta of security D. But we have the beta of security A. We have the beta, if you want me to write it right here, we have beta A, we have beta B, we have beta C, but we're missing beta D. Now, once again, do you guys remember what I said? I said that the portfolio's beta is equal to the weighted sum of its individual betas. The, the, the individual securities beta. So in this case, our portfolio's beta, okay, if we write it right here, okay, we know that the portfolio's beta, okay, is equal to the weight of A times beta A plus the weight of B times beta B and then plus the weight of C times beta C plus the weight of D times beta D. It's as easy as that. Now, obviously we know that we don't have this, but we could quickly see that we actually have our beta C, we actually have our beta B, we have our beta A, and we have the beta of our portfolio. Now, let me ask you, do we have the weight of our individual securities? The answer is yes, we do. And if you've seen my other videos, and if you are within my crash course, you know that we could find the weights, okay, of every single securities by just looking at the money invested within our portfolio for those specific securities. So in order to do so, we just have to do two things, okay? So two things or two things. Essentially, we just have to add all of the money that we've invested into these specific securities, get a total value, and then just find the proportion of how much a specific security is on the total value of that portfolio. So in this case, we see that we have 100,000, we have 250,000, and we have 150,000, then we have 250,000. So we know that the total amount of money invested in this portfolio, I'm gonna write it right here, is equal to 750,000. And as I said, to find the weight, 
okay, of each security, all you have to do is do a proportion, okay? So in this case, this is going to be 100K divided by 750K, and that's going to give you 13.33%. And then it's all written, rinse and repeat. So we have 200K over 750K, which will give you in this case, 33.3%, i.e. one third. And in this case here, we have 150K divided by 750K. If I'm not mistaken, if my quick maths are correct, this should give you 20%. And then finally, we have 250K over 750K. And lo and behold, this is the same thing as our, our security B. I find it funny because every time I say security B, it sounds like Cardi B. And you know, I don't know. I find it pretty funny, especially when you're doing all these videos at the same time. It gets, you know, little things get funny to you. So now we have the weight of every single one of our securities. So we have weight A, weight B, weight C, and weight D. So we're happy now. We know that we could maybe compute what's left over, such that the only thing that's missing for us, the only missing element is beta D, all right? So beta D, this right here, is the only missing element of our puzzle. The only remaining missing element of our puzzle. That's super, super cool. This makes it very easy for us to figure out, well, what we need to do. So as you see right here, we said that the beta of our portfolio is equal to the weighted sum of its individual securities betas. So now, if we literally just plug and play, and we're gonna use purple for this, why not? We know that the beta of our portfolio is equal to 1.42, 8.5, and we know that the weight of A is equal to 0 0.33 times, in this case, I believe the beta of A is 0 0.8. Then we just do this again and again. So we have 0 0.33 times 1.1. .1 So we have 0 0.2 times, in this case, 1.4, and then we have 0 0.3333 times x. Now, let me just define a few things, okay? Once again, let us make things super duper clear. This right here is the beta of our portfolio. This right here is beta A times, is weight A, sorry, times beta A. And then, it, you know, once again, it's rinse and repeat, but I will take the time to make it super duper clear, such that when you revise this, or when you go through this again, you're gonna be able to see, well, okay, what is going on here? So we have the weight of D times our missing piece. Okay, and that's why here we have X, all right? So now if we wanna simplify this into simple terms, and all you have to do is solve, you know, quick little maths, you see that the beta of D is actually equal to 2.257. The math is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is solve for x, and you have all these different values. They're all essentially constants. They're all coefficients. So it becomes really easy to find what you're adding, and then you just have to simply derive for x. So in this case, it becomes painfully obvious that d is the answer. So this is a really cool question because it really gets you to think about what is beta all about? What are the different elements that are included within beta? And we saw, well, hey, beta, once again, 
is the weighted average of all of its portfolios betas. So what we did here is we had four different securities that we had to look at. We had to figure out, well, what's the weight attributed to them? And then we also had to find, thanks to the SML, well, what is the beta of our portfolio first and foremost? And once we had that, it was easy for us because all we had to do was look at our function and derive for our missing beta. So I hope this was able to help you out. And you know, there's no other way to go about this. This is something that you will see on your exam. This is something that most students in finance, especially introduction to finance, have dealt with. And you wanna be able to be comfortable to deal with this in a you know, timely manner, two to three minutes. And hopefully this was able to get you there. Review this question again and again, and use this as a point of reference to deal with similar questions in your preparation. So hopefully this helped you out. And this is the goal of ISMA Helps. My goal is to be able to make learning something that's you know accessible, relatable, and inexpensive. And what I mean by inexpensive is something that's free. And that's why you have all of these different videos on YouTube. You could look at a bunch of different content that I have, or you could go on my website, ismahelps.com slash comp308 if you're from JMSB or slash intro to finance if you're a student from literally anywhere in the world. That's what I'm trying to do here. And if you need more help, you could definitely apply for my crash courses and my scholarships. There are a bunch of different ways for you to actually learn and get what you need to help you become the student I know you can be. We're all at the same level. We're all here. We're all curious. And I know you're able to make it happen. So hopefully this was able to help you out. And I'll see you in the next one.